Most of us are familiar with the breathalyzer test police use to detect the amount of alcohol in a driver's blood. But with recreational pot set to be legalized here in Canada very soon, there's a new roadside test that has just been approved by the federal government. It is designed to determine pot in a driver's blood. The machine is called the Drager Drug Test 5000, but today many questions are being raised about how effective the test will be or even if it's constitutional. The test person should move the collector back and forth from one cheek to the other several times. It works by taking a swab of saliva from a driver's mouth and it will determine the presence of THC in the bloodstream. But critics say the threshold set forward in Canada's new laws is far too low, at just two nanograms per milliliter of blood. Two is a very uh, low limit and we're going to catch people who certainly aren't impaired. The government has said they want to take a precautionary approach uh, because this is something new. Uh, but what lawyers are saying is you can't have unconstitutional laws. You can't take a precautionary approach if it's going to be overbroad and it's going to put people uh, in prison. Harrison Jordan specializes in cannabis law and is not a fan of this new test. He says unlike the breathalyzer test, the Drager 5000 does not determine impairment, only the levels of THC. Not only that, the test results in a high number of false positives. The other concern for Jordan is he says that some studies have shown two nanograms of THC can remain in your blood after seven days of abstention. Also, the test does not work well in cold temperatures, below 4 degrees Celsius. He says all of these factors will be picked apart by lawyers. But will it stand up? Uh, we'll have to see if it stands up. Are they constitutional? Uh, that's a question that's going to be answered by the courts. And I think the courts won't take too kindly to the flaws that are in the test. Even the police admit there are flaws in the Drager 5000. An inspector with the York Regional Police Road Safety Bureau says that's why this will not be the only tool officers use. We are familiar with the device uh, and we did know that this, uh, this approval was coming. This will be just yet one more tool that we, that we will have our, at our disposal to provide one more piece of evidence uh, in addition to uh, the observations of the officer and the opinion of the drug recognition expert that someone is impaired uh, by a drug. Villamir is concerned that we will see an increase in cannabis-related crashes on our roads after legalization, more fatalities and serious injuries. These new devices will be available within four to six weeks. The maker, Drager, tells me in a phone interview the machine is used in many jurisdictions around the world and will remain inside the cruiser for the road test, so the temperature limitation should not be a factor. He also says the test is accurate. We are very confident. If we weren't confident in the technology, we wouldn't have submitted this for testing, and the CSFS wouldn't have passed. It wouldn't have passed their thorough and very rigorous testing. Marijuana becomes legal in Canada October 17th. The government has earmarked $161 million for police forces to buy these devices and train their officers. But not everyone is on board at this point. For example, a spokesperson for the Ontario Provincial Police tells me they haven't decided whether or not they're going to purchase them.